Frank, you greasy Italian, where is the Pellegrino? What's going on? How are you guys? Today we are talking about the most famous hams in the world. Which one is the best? Is it Italy, Spain, perhaps even France? The wild card, America. Uh, so first we have Hamon de Bayonne, which is a French ham that has PGI status. Protected geographical indication produced in the Adour Basin in southwest France with both pigs and salt that come only from that region uh, Second we have probably the best known uh, two Italian hams uh, Prosciutto di Parma and Prosciutto di San Daniele This is the real fucking guinea shit given to me I can say that yeah, I'm a Jewish guy. I'm, I can still say it. You, no. This is the real guinea shit Give it him. This is the real fucking Guinea shit. This is the real fucking Guinea shit. Give it me. That's how you say it. Both are produced in northern Italy. Uh, San Daniele uh, being further northeast, being made with slightly less salt. And the process to make these is slightly different, but both are aged approximately one year. Uh, finally, we have the most famous ham in the world, Hamon Iberico. And this is made specifically from black Iberian pigs. Uh, the finest grade is known as Hamon Iberico di Bolota, uh, from free range pigs that roam oak forests, eating exclusively the acorns uh, during their last period of life. Uh, the ham is cured for a minimum of three years, and depending on the purity of that diet and the purity of the breed of the animal, it can get several grades, black label being the highest. Uh, here I actually have some fresh Iberico. Uh, we offer this on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Uh, this is Iberico di Bolota. It's so red, it almost actually tastes like beef as well, outside of its appearance. The most delicious meat I've had. Uh, I would say this is up there with uh, the Wagyu grass-fed beef we sell, except you can literally taste the acorns and the nuttiness of, of this meat when you have it. Uh, we do have the, the cured ham as well. And before we taste these famous hams, I have hams from each of these countries that don't have this protected status. Every single one of these hams needs to be made in a very specific way, but there are also cheaper versions of hams made from, you know, lower quality pork, uh, you know, with less refined processes. And this will give us an idea of, you know, if you don't want to spend as much money, if you don't, you know, this is the most money I think I've ever spent on food. This was like $70 for a pound of Iberico ham. Uh, the other stuff isn't nearly as expensive, you know, but these lower grades of ham are affordable. Uh, so we're going to try those first. This is just Hamon Serrano, which means, you know, it's ham from part of Spain. And you could even tell, you know, if we start looking at the you know, the color and the fat distribution of these hams. There's not much of a color difference between the Spanish ham and the Italian ham, but the French ham is a bit darker in color. This indicates a slightly higher feed quality, but what's going to really determine the flavor of these cheaper hams is how long they were aged and the amount of salt used. The Serrano, the Spanish ham, is pretty dry, not much flavor. You could tell that you know the fat of the animal isn't that high quality because there's a lack of flavor and the ham doesn't seem to have been aged that much and so I, I would say this is that great uh, Hamon Serrano is usually one of the cheaper hams uh, so this is Italian ham I don't think it's considered prosciutto di parma but it's uh, called prosciutto italiano this already feels moister than the other one Oh yeah, actually way better. Definitely saltier. Has like that slightly fermented flavor. And just much more complex in general. Probably made from higher quality pork. So for the cheaper hams, Italians in the lead. Can France dethrone the cheap Italian ham leader? Not nearly as salty. And because of that, the flavor doesn't seem as pronounced. This is definitely made from a higher quality animal. And the flavor is slightly better. Uh, you know, but since it wasn't salted as heavily, and it doesn't seem like it was aged as much, the flavor isn't as concentrated. I like the French ham, but out of all the cheap ones, the Italian is definitely better. 
For the higher grade hams, first we're going to try the American wild card, La Quercia, uh, prosciutto americano, handcrafted in Iowa from outdoor raised pork, Berkshire heritage breed, probably just, you know, regular crappy corn and soy fed pork. Uh, so appearance wise, you know, it doesn't look that great, you know, from the way it's packaged to the way it's cut, very dry. Very, very dry. I could feel the salt on the outside. Maybe it's just, they use a lot of salt to make this. It feels like leather, to be honest. Okay, honestly, I usually never spit out food, but that's bad. La Quercia, I'm sorry if this is some, some like old product or if you guys just suck at making ham, I don't know. America's out the window, unfortunately. I do remember having that ham in the past and I don't think it was that bad. But either way, the, the flavor wasn't that good anyway. So now we're gonna have the Bayonne ham, Hamon de Bayonne. So this should be better than the other French ham we just had that wasn't protected status. It feels moist, it smells great. It's similar to the other French ham in the sense that it's not heavily salted. The flavor of the meat, the quality of the meat seems good. And I really like this because it's not super salty that you typically have. It's definitely better than the cheaper one, but not by much. All right, now we're gonna try the prosciutto di parma. Slightly higher salt content than the French ham. Not as much flavor. You know, prosciutto di parma is, it's very classic. It's what you typically expect when you taste prosciutto. Uh, but it's not outstanding. Uh, so this is the prosciutto San Daniele. Uh, as we said earlier, it's made with less salt and it is more expensive. It smells, uh, smells great. I smelled it from like a foot away, unlike the other ones. Notably less salty. The problem is if you're comparing a bunch of different hams, the saltier one usually wins out if your palate isn't that refined, in my case. I, I think the prosciutto di parma is slightly better than the San Daniel, but I think it might be just because of the salt content. And the quality of the San Daniel pork, there's not a significant enough difference for it to be better. I'm gonna try the French ham, uh, the Bayonne, one more time to make a decision between these few. I hate to break it to my Italian ancestors, but the French have better tasting pigs. This is be significantly better. It's not as salty. It has more flavor. And it's gluten free. Go figure. Ham is gluten free, who knew? This is actually the first time I've ever ordered anything from Fresh Direct. I ordered Hamon Iberico from my restaurant supplier, but they didn't have any. And then I was stuck with $100 worth of ham and no Iberico to compare it to. So I had to find another way to get this and that way was Fresh Direct. That being said, I'm glad I did because uh, I forgot to mention, unlike all of these other hams, Spain now has a requirement to add nitrates to their ham because there was like a botulism outbreak like 20 years ago or something ridiculous. So where all of these hams are made with just salt and ham, they add sodium nitrite and potassium nitrate to this ham, which is unfortunate because without a doubt, this is the most beautiful pork on the planet. And they added preservatives and nitrates to it. So if you're trying to avoid that type of stuff, Hamon Iberico, Spanish hams, usually do have nitrates added to them, unlike the Italian hams, unlike the French hams. And here we see, you know, there's a significant color difference compared to what we were eating, the other stuff we were eating. It's red, completely red, completely dark. Smells significantly different. Is this bolota? This is bolota. I can't, I can't pin what this flavor is. It's like the fat, the fat is like coating my mouth and it's melting, unlike the other hams. It's not nearly as salty. The flavor is pretty good. Honestly, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. 
It has a very interesting, unique, and complex flavor. The, the flavor can't even be compared to other hams. It's just so unique, it doesn't even taste like ham. And the texture is way different as well. It has a higher fat content. The fat really coats your mouth, and it creates this like this whole new textural experience. Uh, but I'm gonna try the French ham again, and we'll make a decision. I'm gonna be drinking like a gallon of water later. Probably like two gallons, actually. Now that I've eaten over two pounds of salted pork, I think I have a pretty solid decision. So, without a doubt, by far, the Iberico is the best tasting overall. I think that was gonna be pretty obvious, but at $70 a pound, you know, it is multiple times more expensive than all of these other hams. Surprisingly, my second favorite ham was the cheap Italian ham. Uh, what is this? Prosciutto Italiano from Maestri, uh, dry cured ham product of Italy. This was, this was the second best one. Uh, the Hamon de Bayonne, the IGP, the protected French ham, uh, Bayonne ham, I think that was the third best. Prosciutto de Parma, Prosciutto de Saint Daniel, both, both good, both good. Uh, the Serrano ham was probably lowest on the list outside of the La Quercia, La Quercia uh, which was probably just like old, I don't know what was going on there. And the, the cheap French ham is also pretty good. Uh, so you can't really go wrong with most of these. Uh, the thing is I would, you know, avoid the American stuff and I would avoid uh, the cheaper Spanish stuff. Although I will say, you know, I have had some decent products from La Quercia, so I'm inclined to believe that it was just, you know, old and um, not kept properly. So let's talk about the health and nutrition of this ham a little bit. Uh, most of these will be high in omega-6 because of what the animals are being fed not ideal omega fatty acid ratios. However, the Iberico di Bolota, the very expensive Spanish ham, is going to have a good omega-3 ratio because of the diet the pigs are fed, and it's also gonna be very nutrient dense, very nutritious. And yet yeah, not everyone's gonna be able to afford that. It is a raw food, so it doesn't stress those enzymes in your body, but it is heavily salted, and it is high in histamine. So your body does need other things to process those two. Not exactly a low stress food, especially, you know, when I consume two pounds of it. Uh, so, you know, something like this, I have no problem introducing this into my diet, you know, on a daily or weekly basis. The other hams, it's up to you. You know, if I'm traveling for lunch, uh, I will have like a pound, a pound and a half of prosciutto and, and some sparkling mineral water, a very Italian snack. But out of all the things you can get in the supermarket, you know, imported Italian ham, French ham, you know, Spanish ham are all pretty low inflammatory compared to a lot of other foods you could be choosing. I wouldn't focus too much on nutrients unless you're getting the, the Spanish ham. You're just giving your body B vitamins and easily digestible protein. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and above all, please share the video if you enjoyed it. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat. You know, I mentioned earlier we have the Iberico di Bellota, the fresh pork. Uh, in the future, if you guys support us, hey, maybe we'll get you know some of these hams and a deli slicer, and and we'll sell this stuff as well for you guys. Uh, you can also check out Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thanks again for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.